Hi everyone. Uh, I'm Chuan Hua Chen. Uh, I'm the Senior Architecture Div Division Director of Andes Technology. Today I'm going to uh, uh, briefly introduce you know, uh, Andes Extended Risk V features. And uh, Andes Technology uh, is a Taiwan based CPU IP company with over 2 billion Andes embedded SOC shipped. Uh, in uh, different uh, diverse applications. And we want to take RISC-5 uh, and to produce high quality RISC-5 cores to those markets with uh, solutions we developed in the past 12 years. And uh, a, major, a major contribution, uh, we are also a major contributor to RISC-5 tools such as GCC Bing Uto's new lip and recently uh, LLVN and the LLD. And uh, the extended features we added to RISC V include two different parts. The first part is uh, uh, ND Star V5M architecture features. And the second part is the instruction. And in the architecture features, we extended uh, two uh, features in uh, the platform level interrupt controller. And all, we also add a hardware stack uh, safe feature. And we extended, uh, we added a feature to, uh, to redirect exception to debuggers. And in the instruction extension part, uh, our V5M I, uh, instruction set architecture uh, includes the baseline, RISC-V baseline RV IMC base uh, integer instruction, and also includes an optional uh, RVA instruction extension. And we also added a uh, and this performance extension and some and uh, optional and this DSP extension and also an end this custom extension to add new instructions. Uh, now I'm going to go into some details about these features. And the first uh, is uh, we extended the PLIC with a priority based preemption. And in the current uh, RISC V privilege architecture uh, spec, uh, the base PLIC can select an interrupt based on priority, but cannot automatically prevent a lower priority uh, one from interrupting a higher priority interrupt service routine. Uh, you, you can imagine them by using software if you want to do that, but the hardware cannot do that. So and this extended with uh, priority based preemption hardware so that only higher priority ones can preempt the currently executed ISR. Okay. And another feature we extended to make the plic uh, vectorized. Okay, the current, uh, actually the current V1.10 privilege architecture has already defined a vector uh, interrupt on the local interrupt. And then why do we want to vector the plic? Okay, so the reason is that Actually, some design practice calls for a larger number of interrupts than uh, currently the number of local interrupts. The, currently, the local number is based on the, the X length. Is the third, uh, if you use 32-bit uh, and you only have 16 local interrupts, if it's 64-bit uh, uh, architecture, then you only have 48 uh, local interrupts. And it's not easy. You can, you can scale that, but it's not easy to scale the local interrupts. And it makes the programming difficult. So, but on the other hand, it's very easy to extend the number of interrupt source in PLIC. Okay, so we think vectorizing PLIC uh, is more scalable and systematic. Uh, it's a better solution. And also it works on multi-core as well. And the scheme of our vectored uh, plic and is introduced uh, briefly here. And uh, the vector table entry zero uh, actually uh, includes the exceptions and local interrupts except the external interrupt. The external interrupt actually is connected to the plic. And the vector table entry one and above you know, uh, will be used by the external, will be used by the external interrupts from PLIC. Okay, 
And with this extension, the PLIC intra uh, ID has to be transmitted directly from PLIC to uh, a target, to a heart. And we also change uh, the vector table scheme a little bit. Uh, instead of uh, storing a jump a instruction, a jump instruction with a limited uh, immediate range to uh, an instruction address. We want to increase the address range uh, for, for that to reach an ISR. Yeah. Because we, we think we don't want uh, uh, software programmers to deal with um, uh, complicated linker script to make sure the jump instruction can reach uh, an ISR. Sometimes in the system, uh, the memory uh, are put in different parts of address space. Some of them are far apart. So we want to extend that range. And another question is now, if we want to go to RV64 systems, then the table size will be doubled to reduce that range. So we decided uh, to keep that as the RV32 system. And we just store the lower 32 bit address and use the upper 32 bit address from the MTVAL CSR. Okay, so you still can reach a four gigabyte uh, address range. And with those two uh, extended plic features, uh, we compare with the base plic, and we uh, actually saves uh, more than 30 instructions uh, for dispatch and the software the preemption overhead. And it's equivalent to a, a more than 50% instructions before entering the actual uh, ISR. And some designs require uh, the latency from CPU taking the interrupt to entering the ISR to be as sure as possible. And we want to make that happen. And also another benefit is the ease of use for priority-based preemption. <coughs> And the programmer can just uh, initialize the priorities for uh, each interrupt in PLIC, and then software never needs to deal with it again. The software has to do not need to manage that. And we also add a, a stack safe feature that will use hardware to do stack uh, overflow and underflow protection. Basically, the hardware mechanism will monitor the SP register. Uh, for protection, and another use is for recording. In the protection mode, uh, if the process stack is uh, overflowed or underflowed, well, the hardware will generate an exception. And in the recording mode, uh, actually other customers need that, because uh, when the system is running, you really don't know, you know how big your stack is. Uh, with that mechanism, you can record the maximum stack usage for uh, your applications. And in the instruction part, uh, uh, we add our performance extension instructions. A big part of the program is memory access. Uh, we want to reduce the instructions uh, to do that. So we add a GP implied low store instructions uh, to increase the immediate range so that uh, uh, you can use fewer instructions to access memory. And we also calculate affected address uh, based on data type. Uh, we also add a, a compare and branch instruction, compare operand with a small constant. We also add uh, some few handy instructions for zero and sign extension. Yeah. And to further reduce code size, we also add a code dense extension and to use the some space in the still uh, reserve the 16-bit uh, encoding space to try to reduce the code size further. And we also uh, add an uh, NDS DSP ISI extension. Uh, the, the, the feature, uh, the important features of this ISI extension uh, is uh, greater than 130, actually it's greater than 150 instructions. And by these instructions use only GPRs. They are not using floating point registers. And it includes saturation and rounding, and uh, it supports uh, various a few uh, fixed point and the integer data types. And it has uh, CMD instructions for 16-bit and 8-bit data types. And it supports uh, uh, various many different uh, signed and unsigned operations. 
And another important part of our DSP ISA extension is to include a 64-bit sign and unsigned addition and subtraction, and also 64-bit uh, multiplication and add. Uh, and we also add a zero overhead loop. Uh, and to facilitate using the DSP ISA extension, and we add intrinsic functions so that the uh, programmers can use intrinsic functions and use that in C. And also we you know, add features in compiler so that compiler can generate, also generate the distinct instruction based on uh, data types or the vector data types. Mm. And to benchmark the DSP ISA performance, uh, we use two uh, benchmarks. The first is Helix MP3 decoder. And we first you know, com uh, compile just with baseline ISA, and then we compile with uh, DSP ISA uh, without hand optimization. And then we can immediately get a 50% cycle reduction from 22 MCPS to down to 11 MCPS. It's a uh, million cycles per second. And for G.729 codec, and uh, for the encoder and decoder, uh, you. Uh, Compare with the comp compiled codec with an optimized, hand opti uh, including compiler and hand optimized, and the uh, hand, hand optimization uh, will get a five times uh, speed out of 5x, and it's equivalent cycle reduction of 80%. And an important part of our edit feature is NDS custom extension to allow customer to add new instructions. And for different applications, you know, it, it really needs different instructions uh, to make it as efficient as possible. So we need, need to add new instructions to increase performance and reduce energy. And the important part is our framework. The framework facilitates instruction design and implementation through some ACE script and uh, some C statement and Verilog statement. And also, we allow our customers to add uh, new custom registers, memories, and port as operands. And we also, the framework will generate extended tool chain simulator RTL and verification and tests automatically. We also, this framework will help designers to focus on the most important part of the, the new instruction design. And the framework will just take care of most of the, the tedious things you know, for the designers. And that's the features we added. Thank you very much.